Hello Space Fans, Happy Earth Day, and welcome to another edition of Space Fan News. This week, the Hubble Space Telescope celebrates its 26th year in space. NASA's Fermi Gamma Ray Telescope detects a brief high energy burst that may be associated with the LIGO gravitational wave event, and Deep Astronomy now has an app. Late April is always an exciting time here at Deep Astronomy. Each year marks the end of another period of unparalleled discovery from the venerable Hubble Space Telescope. This year, Hubble marks its 26th anniversary of looking up and providing us with uncompromising views of our place in the universe with this image. Known as the Bubble Nebula, or NGC 7635, it lies some 7,100 light years away in the constellation of Cassiopeia. This bubble is created by the strong stellar winds of a hot and massive star lying at the center of the bubble, which is around seven light years across. Now to get an idea of how big that is, it's roughly one and a half times the distance from our sun to our nearest star, Alpha Centauri. That's pretty big. <laughs> the star at the center is 45 times more massive than our sun. Gas on the star gets so hot that it escapes away into space as a stellar wind moving at over 4 million miles per hour. As the surface of the bubble shell expands outward, it slams into dense regions of cold gas on one side of the bubble. This asymmetry makes the star appear dramatically off-center from the bubble, with its location in the 10 o'clock position in the Hubble view. And there's an image we can only expect from Hubble. After 26 years and five servicing missions from the Space Shuttle, Hubble is operating great and is expected to continue well into the next decade, during which it will be operating alongside its successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, which is due to be launched in October 2018. And won't that be exciting times? Golden age of astronomy, I'm telling you! <laughs> Next, remember back in February when it was announced that for the first time, gravitational waves were detected from the collision of two 30 solar mass black holes? Well, this week, NASA has announced that the Fermi Gamma Ray Observatory has observed a brief, weak burst of high-energy light about a half second after the LIGO event with the onboard Gamma Ray Burst Monitor, or the GBM. And the observations are consistent with the same part of the sky. Now, analysis of this burst suggests only a 0.2% chance of simply being a random coincidence. So they're thinking this is real. Now, this would be amazing because seeing gamma ray bursts arising from a black hole merger would be a first because when black holes merge, a black, well, I want to do my black hole dance, but never mind. <laughs> when black holes merge, they usually do so without emitting any light at all unless they are sucking in gas and dust at the time. So detecting light from a gravitational wave source will give astronomers a much deeper understanding of the event. Fermi's GBM sees the entire sky not blocked by Earth and is sensitive to X-rays and gamma rays with energies between 8,000 and 40 million electron volts. Now for comparison, the energy of visible light ranges from about 2 to 3 electron volts. These are very high energy. The burst seen by Fermi lasted only about a second, but it has helped narrow down where the black hole merger was seen by LIGO. LIGO is amazingly sensitive, but it's also very fuzzy, and it's difficult to pinpoint exactly where events occur that it sees, so this was a very happy occurrence. So here's a simulation of how Fermi helped narrow down the location. Here is where LIGO thinks it could have been. Here is where Fermi's GBM saw the burst. But part of Fermi's field of view is blocked by the Earth, so it can't be there. So subtract that out, and here is where it could have occurred based on the assumption that what Fermi saw was actually a burst from the LIGO event. So in this case, they were able to narrow down the LIGO search area by about two-thirds, and greater improvements are possible in future detections, so they gotta keep looking up. Like we already do. <laughs> Finally, some stuff about deep astronomy and space fan news. First up, thanks to the support of the SFN Patreon patrons, we have an app. 
<laughs> it's available for both Android and iPhone users, and this app will allow you to stay current with all Deep Astronomy content, not just SFN. So new space videos, SFN episodes, podcasts, hangouts, all of it, right here in your phone. And I can even push notifications to you when a live event like a hangout or coverage of a launch is about to happen. And yes, I'm going to do launches when I get back to Florida. But don't worry though, I promise not to spam me with notifications. I know how much I hate getting those all the time anyway, but I'll only do it for live events or something I think is really worth it. So anyway, take a look at this and tell me what you think. Now, I didn't develop this myself. I'm using a service called dwnlddownload.me, and it grabs all the content, and, well, off the bat, I can tell you there's some things you're not going to like, because I don't like it. Now, first off, it's pretty obvious when you go to use it that it was designed for phones and not tablets. And there's also not a way to view this in landscape mode, which for videos is pretty crucial. Now, they promised me they're working on that, though, and I hope... I really hope they get that fixed soon. But for most content, it's better than nothing. And for podcasts, especially the audio ones, it doesn't matter because what the orientation is because, well, it's all audio. So check it out and let me know what you think. I hope you like it, and I hope it's one of the, it helps make getting some of our content easier. And I want to thank all the Space Fan News Patreon patrons to help make it possible. This is where your money's going. Also, I know I promised to stop uploading SFN episodes to the Deep Astronomy channel starting today. But I got some advice that convinced me to keep it here. The advice was to look at my channel as an actual channel, and that has many shows on it, right? I mean, when you go to a channel, it doesn't just show the one thing. You, see, you can see lots of programs on it. So if people want specific content like space videos, or if they just want SFN, then put them in a playlist and people can subscribe to that. So that's what I'm doing. I'll still upload to the SFN channel as well, though, since I've already started and it has about 4,000 subscribers. So for now, Space Fan News is going to be uploaded both on Deep Astronomy and Space Fan News because, well, I think it makes the most sense. Well, that's it for this week, Space Fans. Thanks to all SFN Patreon patrons. You guys rock, and you really are helping make a difference for this show. And thanks to all of you for watching. And as always, keep looking up. So greater improvements, impu greater improvements, um, improvements, <laughs> greater improvements are possible in future detectin detectins. <laughs>